thank you so much for your valuable time. We hope you enjoyed this inspirational information and encourage you to join us in making a difference by visiting us at www.cjclife.com. So our thesis of this month, one scripture that I've been teaching every day, every week, that this thesis brings, comes from this particular scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If you look at the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person. Somebody say brand new person. He's not going to put a patch on the old person. The Bible tells us he's going to become a brand new by his grace, by the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brand new person, not outside, but inside first. So God will change inside. That will bring manifestation outside. Then you can see the fruit of your own life and you can walk in it. And he goes on to say, he's not the same anymore. In other words, you're not going to live a life that you used to live. Now God is going to give a new way of living life. And he says, a new life has begun. How many would like to have a new life every year when we start a new life? Come on, let's give the Lord hand up. God says new life, will God will grant to all of us. And that's my thesis for this entire month that I've been doing. That if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He says that he becomes a new person a brand new person inside out so today I want to talk to you about relationships or spiritual I know some of you are probably like okay bro. relationships are spiritual finances are spiritual your your DNA of being having spiritual life is spiritual and Fitness is not going to happen until the spiritually you resolve that. And today, the last sermon for this series, that relationships are spiritual. And I'm going to show you how God worked through the, all through the, all through the you know, uh, history. And God showed over and over again that relationships are very vital. In other words, relationships are crucial. You got to make a clear decision for you, for your spouse, for your family, because this is going to change your course of your year. Relationships is going to put you in a place where you, you're going to heading. You know, like, like I used to tell my son, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Right? When you know your friends, then we tell where you're going. So it's, it's important for us to know that relationships are spiritual and, and that way you can look at a different perspective. So I'm going to start with the beginning story of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. I want you to look at this um, phrase that I highlighted for you, kind of rethink this. And some of us probably know the scripture, but I want you to kind of look at it one more time. And the Lord himself said, then God said, let the land produce vegetation and seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with the seed in it in other words god invested everything in a seed god invested heaven on earth in a seed and he calls that seed is the word of god for us even in the vegetation wall you see the seed has the tree in it the seed has the future in it the seed has the the glory of that particular vegetation in it everything god wrapped into or consolidated into one seed and he says if you have the mustard seed of faith you can move the mountain because that seed will begin to grow inside and make you that tree that god talks about in the word of God it says everything the plants and trees and land with the fruit the seed in it according to their variation kinds. so there's a kinds that God put that in perspective so that they're all going to be connected in other words that God has uh, understood the law of, of uh, intimacy that between things that when they are intimate they're going to produce something and God put that from the beginning. There's a law of intimate. You know, you and your wife or you and your husband get together and there's an intimate and there is going to be the fruit that's coming out of that intimate. It's not only naturally, even in, in entire world that God created, wants, God wants to the creation to multiply. God wants the creations to grow. God wants the creation to 
increase. And he says the next verse, and it was so, the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds. And look at that, according to their own kinds, how God put that separation for, for their intimate uh, relationships, bring, brought the fruit and increase. And trees bearing fruit with the seed in it according to their kinds. And I love the next verse, he says, God saw that it was good. In other words, when God, see, when God uh, saw that increase and fruitfulness and getting blessing, and he saw that was good. And it's important for us to know that's the intention that the Lord has from the beginning for all of us. He wants us to you know, produce. He wants us to increase. He wants us to be blessed in the things. And the next verse he says, then God said after he did that, God said, let us make man in our image in our likeness, let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock of all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And this is what, you know, when you go to seminary or when you go to biblical college, they teach this one. This is called the law of the first spoken words. And this is where God first speaks something so effectively and powerful. It's important for us to know as a students, when we go to class and we learn this, it's like, you know, you got to focus on these things. This is a priority the Lord is setting up for the mankind. And this is where God first speaks something so effectively and powerfully. And there is a law in his word. In other words, I want you to know, when God speaks something, it's not going to end one day. God speaks something, it's going to end only in him. That's why he said, I am the author. Alpha, I am the Omega. He said, I am the beginning, I am the end. He said, I am the first, I am the last. So the Lord is the only one can end what he spoke. And it's important for us to know that as long as God has not ended, that word is still functioning even right now as we're hearing. He said, God blessed them and said to them, watch the two words, be fruitful and increase in number. And those are first two words came from the lips of God concerning mankind. God is not said, I'm going to judge it. I'm going to fix it. No, he said, be fruitful and increase in numbers. And it's important for us to know the idea of God, our God that we serve, God that we worship. He wants us to be fruitful Increase in numbers. He wants us to know that in the intimate relationship you're going to produce. In an intimate friendship you're going to produce. In an intimate any relationship that you have you know, in, in this world, you're going to produce and you're going to be fruitful. Increase in numbers. And he goes on to say, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air or every living creature that moves on the ground. And that's how it started. From the beginning, intentions are, are, are so accurate all through the scriptures. The Lord blessed from that day Noah. The Lord blessed from that day Abraham. The Lord blessed from that day Isaac. The Lord blessed from that day Jacob. The Lord blessed through Jacob, Joseph, Manasseh, Ephraim. The Lord blessed to Judah. The Lord blessed to Reuben. All through the generation, there is a blessing transformation happening through the relationships God is releasing the outcome of that. And I want you to know something, people of God. Your relationships that you have on this earth, not just for your race only, not just for your time frame only. He's building a future. He's building something powerful. He's building something awesome for coming days through you, for your children, for your people, for your friends, that we don't see it in that perspective. Look at God started with the Adam and Eve. He's still continuing that relationships with the people because he knew one thing, in relationship, two things will happen, fruitfulness and increase. In relationships, fruitfulness and increase. Not just the man and woman relationship I'm talking about. Any relationship, any friendship, any kind of intimate relationship that I have with anything, anybody, any situation, two things will happen. Fruitful and increase. Now you understand this is the law of execution by God. We can change this law. This law will work either both sides. If I have a friendship with the wrong crowd, I will have that fruitfulness increase of curse that coming from the branch 
Oh, I'm going to lose some of y'all. So that's okay. But you see, this is where sometimes we misunderstand the scriptures when Bible says, the Lord let the sins of the father go down to the third generation. We're thinking, how can God do that? God does not do anything. God did not do that. It is the law of this fruitfulness and increase will apply to the generation. So if we don't do it right, and it's going to affect the next generation. How many of us seen the statistic shows that if a child has been abused, 96% times the child will abuse other child. It's a fruitfulness and an increase. And the study shows that if the, if the father is a drug addict, next generation most likely will be double drug addict. Fruitfulness and increase. It's nothing to do with God did this thing. It is the law of execution. As long as, you know, law of sowing and reaping, this thing will work. But he did it for good intentions. The enemy came in and sowed a wrong seed in our lives and leading us a wrong direction. So over the period of time that the men of God, women of God, they followed, they got blessings and they also followed a wrong direction that applying wrong things and eventually their generations begin to be polluted, walked away from God, believing ungodly things and doing things that is not biblical and right in their hearts and hurting other people and walking in a darkness. And at the end of the Old Testament, the book called Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, the last chapter of the Old Testament, the last word of the Old Testament is called curse. Look at the Bible. The word curse is ended in the Old Testament, the last time. In that book, at that time, people were asking these weird questions. God, if you said we are fruitful and increased, why are we struggling financially? Why are we going through all this stuff? Why are we being attacked by the terrorists? Why are things are happening? All these things where they're asking God those questions in the book of Malachi. It's a great book. You can read it chapter 2 in 10 minutes if you can. And look at the people ask that question, God. And God spoke to the people through a prophet, Malachi. And he said this. He said, you're asking me question why these things happen? You're asking a question why things are going wrong? You're asking me a question why these wrong things are happening to you and your family, your members? And he says, and this is the second thing you do. And God said a couple things, but this is one of the things I extracted to, for you to show why some bad things happen and things that go wrong. You cover the altar of the Lord with the tears and with the weeping and crying. And so he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with the goodwill from your hands. You ask why. It is because the Lord is watching or witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant, yet she is your companion, your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the spirit? And why one? He, he seeks God's offspring. In other words, godly offspring. And he goes on to say, therefore, take heed to your what? Spirit. And let none deal treacherously with the wife of his own. And, and I don't know, I, you know, you're looking at it like, I don't know what I'm reading there. So they're asking question, why things going wrong? He said, the problem is not that you're making something wrong. The problem is your relationships are not lined up. The problem is your relationships are spiritual. Because you're asking God to do something, he said, no, your relationships to be important. I, I know Bible says there, you know, it's important that your covenant with your wife is so important. He looks at so high priority he's not trying to tell us that you know he hates the divorce and all that he he's telling us there's a law that working over marriage my relationship with god is important my relationship with wife is the second thing that's gonna give me to go forward to bring fruit and increase so when people ask that question they're sowing a seed. They're crying out to the Lord. They pray, going to church. They're praying all the things. But God said, no, you are going wrong in one direction. It's building relationships. And that's why things are not working sometimes. And he said that through, this, through these things. That's why this message that I call relationships are what? Spiritual. Say that again. Relationships are what? 
spiritual. Your blessings are invested in relationships. Your healing is invested in relationships. Your destiny is invested in relationships. Your fruitfulness is invested in relationships. To who you related, it's important and connect that because enemy will put all kinds of noises in your, in your mind, in your thought that she's not good for me, he's not good for me, I'm gonna do my own thing. They don't like. It's all the lies are coming from enemy because enemy wants to division, bring a division in you, in your marriage, in your family. But God says relationships are spiritual. They're spiritual. Whether you agree with me, you look at the scriptures all through the time. Relationships are spiritual. And relationships have a lasting impact. They're not just one day. They're not just for your race. They're not just for your 80 years of your life. What you're doing, your children are watching. And what you are, your children are picking up. So my matter should remain same for my children. My marriage, is, it doesn't matter what I feel, what I don't feel. It is spiritual. The next generation are watching us. Next generation are looking at us. We got to keep our life right with God so that the things can happen. The next generation He's not interested in only one generation. He wants to multiply next generation. He wants to multiply next generation. He wants to grow in next generation. The kingdom of God wants to spread out and cover the earth until the glory of God will be filled the earth. But it happens through relationships. Lasting impact. We're living in a culture we can divorce just like that. Don't look at me like I'm lost it. We can go and have a nice talk, but it's not godly. God is working with us. So as you begin this new year, as you go on and just revisit your relationships and see what God is doing. And I want you to know, good or bad, they impact the relationships. And my, you know, my life is shaped by the people I know intimately. Who do you know intimately? Who are you hanging around with a lot of your time? Who is that you're investing into? Because that, that's going to shape your destiny. That's going to shape your future. The last one that I, I have the point here is the relationships Relationship choices are crucial. It's important that you want to choose the right relationships from the beginning. Not everybody are going to go with you where you're going. And I, I got to tell you, the younger generation, so, you know, if, if you're a girl here, your boy here, if a boy asking you to do something that you don't want to do, erase that person right away. If he wants to talk to me, give my number to that person. I'll talk to that person. Because it's not worth it. Your life is not worth it to, to be a slave to somebody who's telling what to do. And then you don't want to do. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand up. Because it's a crucial. Because we're living in that culture everywhere. People are not teaching godly things. We think anything we can do here. You can't do like that and be fruitful. Guess what? You can be fruitful in a wrong way. Having a wrong children. Having a wrong culture. Having a dysfunctional family. Having all those things because we make a choices of relationships. Relationships are crucial. Amen. Okay. Now, now let me tell you something. Everybody failed. Nobody's perfect. We all are failed. That's why the gospel is powerful. We all are failed. I failed. You failed. Everybody failed. But Jesus came to reset Everything we have done so that we can do right this year. Yes, last year I messed up. Last year I made a mistake. Last year I was failed. But this year the blood of Jesus is powerful, effective, working on my body. I believe in the cross of the Lord. He died for me. When he died, I died with him. When he was risen from the dead, I was risen from the dead. This year I will have an intentional relationship. The power of God will come in my life because I am being forgiven by the blood of the Lamb. Forgiven. So don't look around and feel guilty. Jesus paid it all. Let's do it right this year. Can I hear you, man? Let's do it right this year. Yes, I made mistakes. We all make mistakes. But that's the Old Testament. But the New Testament begins 
with the gospel of kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. You will be given the power of the growing peace and joy. Righteousness. <laughs> so the God the Father see. I bless them. They've been polluted. They're bringing all kinds of dysfunctionality. And Jesus came to reset our relationships so back with God. Number one, come on. I just love it. He reset our relationship with God. Did you know when Jesus was ascending to heaven from the Mount of Olives, that's the time he finished his course. He preached his gospel. He died for the gospel. He gave the power to people. And he said, I'm going to my father. And you do know, before he left this earth, whatever he spoke are important to us. You know what he spoke before he left this earth? Be fruitful and increase. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand job. He's still telling, be fruitful and increase in relationships. Because he followed his father's instruction and he gave that back to us today. So good news here, my friend. If 2014, you made mistakes in relationships, redo it again this year in a brand new way. Put God first in your life. Take care of your wife. And do intentionally your relationship. The Lord will bring blessing to all of us. Proverbs 27, 19 says, A mirror reflects man's face. But what he is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. If there's any friend of you pulling you down from God, talk to the hand. You ain't touching this. Da, 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 da. You ain't touching this. Because I'm not going to waste my another year with you. You're pulling me down from God. No, I'm not going to waste because he says that it will reveal to me the type of friends that I have. And that's the word of God, by the way. <laughs> so what kind of friends are you hanging around with this year? And God is telling you, can you make a choice? You make that choice so that God can bring blessings towards your way. Number one, that I ask this question to me, like we do all this month, we're doing survey on our own self, right? How we're doing our finances, how we're doing our fitness. And today... I'm going to ha have a survey that I did on me. Am I nurturing important relationships this year? Are you nurturing important relationships this year? How is your relationships with people? And that's why we're creating these small groups. So you can find like-minded people, people that have the vision that God is speaking to so that you can walk with them, you can grow with them, you can be delivered from the, from the pain, the past that we've been polluted by so we can nurture new relationships. And God brings healing through people as you're talking to them, as you, as you expound your problems to them, as, you, as you're listening to them, God will do something good in your life and miracle so I got to ask this question, am I nurturing important relationships? To me, number one relationship has to be important all this year is my relationship with God. That has to be high priority. That has to be number one. And the, the best how I know, I got to cultivate that relationship with God. Because with God, all things are possible. Without God, we cannot do nothing. Number two, I got to have an intentional relationship, nurturing important relationship with my wife. Because after God, my wife is the person that's going to be living with me 24 hours a day, all through the, my life. You know, because she's the one who's going to put up whether I smell good today, smell bad today, whether I look good today, bad today. She's the one. So it's important for me to nurture that relationship. So are we... Am I nurturing important relationship? Look at Galatians 5, 13, 15. It says, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, 
watch out you will be destroyed by each other y'all <laughs> and that's the that's the right word of the lord if we can bite devour you know we it's so easy we don't need a faith to talk about somebody but we need a faith to talk about somebody's character in a good way but you don't need a faith to talk about any bad stuff we can talk just like that we'll put it on a facebook just like that we'll put it on twitter just like that we'll put it on instagram just like that because you don't need a faith it's easy to devour it takes a time it takes a commitment it takes a relationship to build that relationship and it says this is the law law in one single command love your neighbor as yourself Are you biting your wife? Are you devouring? Are you biting your husband, devouring? Look at this. You will be destroyed. That fruitfulness and increase come as a destruction power over your life. You can fast all day. You can pray all day. But you cannot bypass the law of gravity. That's a law of fruitful and increase working. Either it will work in a good way It'll work in a bad way. Look at the world today. He put that in motion. Whoever plug into a good way, they reap the harvest. Who are plugged into a wrong way, they reap the harvest. Study shows over and over again. Number two that I, I focus on myself. Am I serving harmful relationships? Am I, am I removing something, some ones that don't bring the destiny the Lord created? Am I severing harmful relationships? Like I say, young lady, if the man asks you to do something that you don't want to do, you don't want to be in that relationship. You want to get out of that relationship. Young man, if you're in a relationship that, you know, you're the woman asking you to do something that you don't want to do, you don't want to be in that relationship. You want to you stay away from the relationship so that God can use you and to bring you. And it says here, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. You see that? Bad company always brings corruption to good character. So choose your relationships as you begin this year intentionally and he goes on to the next verse proverbs 13 20 it says he walk he who walks with the wise grows wise but a companion of fools who suffers harm if god removes some people from your life don't be afraid of it let them go that's for your own benefit for your own, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for his own benefit. Because you may build relationship in the past, and now you've, you're probably emotionally connected, now you feel lost, but God says, no, let, let it go. It's, it's not a part of your life. He says, who walks with the wise will grow wise. I don't want to have companion with the fools because it brings harm to you. And that's the word of God says. And God's word constantly talks about this thing. It's important for you to make good relationships. It's important that you choose relationship. Look at the, it's a, you know, you don't want to be hanging around with the lazy person because it brings a destruction. It says a lot of scripture talks about laziness, angry, and, and immortal, and, you know, greedy. All this, you find the scriptures in the Bible. But he's saying that don't associate. So that you can be fruitful this year. You can be fruitful in a greater way. And Proverbs 12, 26 says here. A righteous man is cautious in friendships. Be cautious with your friendship. We're creating this small group so that you know God's kind of people that you want to hang around so you can grow you can you can see what god is doing and you can plug into what god is leading you where god is leading you a righteous man is cautious in a friendship and the in the in the, side, the other words that i found that you, you that are younger people that wants to get married you that are younger people wants to you know pair up with somebody that feels good looks good smells good look at here what bible says do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? 
And what fellowship can light have with the darkness? And he's telling them, don't do that. It's going to hurt your future. If there's somebody that's doing, asking you to do something that you don't want to do, you don't want to be in that relationship. You want to come out of the relationship. Find godly people and connect with the godly people and grow with them. And the third one that I asked, this is the last one that I asked myself, that survey, am I initiating meaningful relationships? Am I initiating a meaningful relationships in my life, in my family, in our church? Because it's important that we got to be having intentional, having meaningful relationships. And it says, Proverbs 18, 24, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So if I know, if somebody who believes in what God is doing, if I know who, who's investing in what God is doing, I'm going to intentionally invest in them. Because any relationship that do not have a reciprocity, it will die. So we want to have a real friendship, not the fake friendships. We want to have real friendship. Then we can grow. Then we can see what God would do great things in our life, in our families. And look at Jesus himself. He himself identifies with this. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. And today... As I'm wrapping up this, you know, if you can just bow your heads, we're going we're gonna to pray. This is a decision-making time, a critical moment for all of us. We're going to make a, a good decision for us as this year progresses. As you heard a few bits and pieces from the Bible, the best how I know, I can't do a great job preaching than the Word of God itself. The Word you saw spoke to you louder than I'm speaking from here. But if you're here, are you that are watching, and you're ready to make some serious decisions for your relationships. But before you're going to make any relationship decisions for you, for your family, this is important for you, my friend. This is important for all of us that do we have a real relationship with God this year? Or are you backsliding? Are you here today? Now you say, you know one thing, Lord, I want to do right this year. Yes, I made a mistake last year, but I want to do it right this year. And it begins with uh, Jesus being your friend, my friend. He is your friend. He wants you to be his friend. Hey, he, he'll, be, he'll be the best friend for you the rest of your life. But it starts with you. It's you bringing your life towards him. And you may be here that, you know, you, you've done all these things and you made mistakes in relationship like I did. Now you want to redo that relationships back again. You want to be more intentional. You want to have that, that initiating the meaningful relationships. Or you want to have your relationship with your spouse right this year. I would like to pray with you. I want you, I want you to know that we are here, church is here to pray with you, believe in you, and, and speak a word for you so that you can see what God will do in your life. But if you're here and you're ready to recommit your life to Christ as your friend and you're ready to do a, have a meaningful relationship this year and you want me to include you in the prayer that I'm about to pray and you say, look, Pastor, pray for me that I want to have a meaningful relationship. I want to recommit my life. Can I see your hand if you can lift your hands? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ma'am. If you, you can put those hands down, let's make that commitment. It's not, I'm, I'm gonna stay away between you and God. I want you to look upon God. I, don't, don't put me, I'm, not, I'm just a pastor. I did my job. Now, the decision you're gonna make, you're not gonna make to me or church, you're gonna make to God Himself. You're gonna make to Jesus Christ Himself. I want you to look upon the Lord. Uh, he, he's the one, your best friend today. He's the one, He's going to lead you, guide you every step of your life. I'm just a pastor. I'm just telling you what the word of God tells me to tell you. What the Lord is telling me to tell you. But you're the one making this decision. And I want you to look upon him. And say, Lord Jesus. I am sorry. For every mistake that I ever made. In my relationships. Yes, Lord. I am sorry. For even not having good relationship with you. But this year, God. Come talk to this year, God. I want to have a friendship with you. 
I want to have that friendship relationship with you, Lord. Come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Be my Lord and my Savior. Father, thank you for being my friend. Lead me in your truth and in your righteousness. Help me to have a meaningful relationship. If you're married, say out loud, help me to have a good relationship with my spouse. Help me to have a pure relationship with my spouse. Lead me, my Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much for your valuable time. We hope you enjoyed this inspirational information and encourage you to join us in making a difference by visiting us at www.cjclife.com.